Over the last year, we all saw one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, Dream, get falsely accused of life-ruining allegations that nearly destroyed his career. He was guilty until proven innocent, and the only reason he barely made it out was due to his last-minute response, where he was able to point out inconsistencies and showed evidence that was undeniable in order to vindicate himself. It was a humbling experience for thousands of people who instantly labeled him guilty without even hearing out his side first. But still, because of how long these allegations were spread, it will now follow Dream forever for the rest of his life, despite him clearing his Name. It's the most recent example of how someone can be just as much of a victim due to false allegations, serving as a good learning experience to ensure that hopefully things will be different next time. And that was just a little over three months ago, yet already in the same community, his best friend George Not Found got accused of sexual assault. But thankfully, this time around, things were different, and no one made any of the same mistakes as they did last time. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're a serious criminal. What the living fuck? are you thinking in that moment? You gotta be out of your fucking living mind, drunk or not. This isn't a Twitter thing, this is real life, this is a, someone's life. It is a crime! It is a bad thing! They're so young, they're so young, and you're so fucking old. What are you doing? They're kids. They're teenagers. I don't think we should allow a second opportunity when we're dealing with teenagers and children. George Not Found is a 10 million subscriber Minecraft YouTuber who recently has had allegations come out against him that he sexually assaulted another creator named Katie Bugs. But here's the catch though, <laughs> couldn't guess this one. It's a complete false allegation, coming from a manipulative, malicious liar who just wants this guy's career destroyed. And it actually worked. His best friends have turned on him, he's lost brand deals, hundreds of thousands of followers, and his reputation will now forever be fucked. All over this woman twisting, manipulating, and in some cases just outright lying about the guy to fool the internet that he sexually assaulted. My story is about power and age and consent. But this starts off with Katie Bugs going live on March 9th, telling her story how at VidCon last year, she was sexually assaulted by George Not Found. She claims when she was freshly 18, George, being a much older man, took advantage of her when she was vulnerable and drunk by inviting her to his hotel room and insisting on her to drink alcohol while playing drinking games, where then he went on to touch her underneath her shirt out of completely nowhere. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. I was scared and I felt sick either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. It was the first time anyone had ever touched me. <laughs> But even before George's response, there were many things off about this initial stream. First, that Katie was apparently freshly 18 and on the market when George preyed on her. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. I don't know what metric she used here to determine the freshness date on her fucking body, but she turned 18 on her birthday January 2nd, and last year's VidCon was June 21st. <laughs> That's, that's your six month in. You know, a couple weeks into being 18, if you still want to give yourself the freshness label, date, whatever, sure. A month, you're pushing it. But six? <laughs> Six? I was freshly 18. Also, there's this weird focus on George being this much older, bigger, and much more influential person to try to paint him out to be Harvey Weinstein or something. I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. And he was eight years older than me and far more powerful. Like, yeah, sure, I guess he's got more subs than you, but I mean, the guy was 26 at the time and you were 18. Who cares? I don't know how this has become a relevant part in the first place in the situation that a 26 year old flirting with an 18 year old is a problem. <laughs> like, that anyone's supposed to care about that? I mean, come on. At worst, like, you, what? You call the guy a little bit creepy and say, if that was my daughter, I wouldn't want her with a 26 year old. But she's trying to use this to imply he's some kind of predator. Listen to this. She's talking as if 18's the new eight. Later that night, when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him 
and in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. And with this having more power thing, I think Destiny puts it pretty well, noting that there's power imbalances in nearly every relationship or hookup, but just because there's a power imbalance doesn't inherently make it predatory or abusive. It's only if the person who has the power abuses that power. Just because you're a big YouTuber doesn't now mean people who work 9 to 5 jobs are now beneath you and you can't hook up with them because it's inherently an abuse of power. That's, that's ridiculous. The only time this would be a problem is if he said he'll give you a shout out if you have sex with him, for example. Because yeah, then he's abusing his power to try to get sex. But that's not what George does at all. I figured that's just how things were. That that was the price I had to pay to be there. Are you are you serious? You felt like this was your price to pay for being around him? So already there's some questions raised just with her first allegation stream, especially given that all of this is just her own testimony. Not one screenshot or text was shown to let us know that she even ever interacted with this guy. But George then releases his response video, putting into question a lot more things about Katie's allegations. First bringing up that Katie outright lied about George being the one who insisted on the drinking games, showing text that it was actually her and her friend friends who asked them to play. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. And they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And you can see that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. At the time, all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking, and insisted on drinking games, and, already drunk, I obviously completely complied. And also, real quick, when she says, all of us girls were stumbling from how drunk we were from the party we just came from. Her own friend, who was actually there with her at this party that they were all stumbling drunk from, apparently, came out with her own side and said that they weren't even drinking at all at this party. Um, went back to the hotel, and that's where we came from. Um, it was a 16 up party, no one drank. Um, people claimed that we came to the hotel having already drank. We didn't. We didn't. Um, we went back to the hotel, didn't drink, went to their hotel room, and that's when we started to drink. At the time, all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. No one drank. Stumbling and everything. Then George brought up that when he touched under Katie's shirt around her waist stomach area, that it wasn't out of nowhere at all, and Katie left out and omitted the fact that they were already cuddling with each other for over an hour at this point, and she was smiling, laughing, and giving no indication that she was uncomfortable at all. As I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we had been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. And skipping a little ahead for this point, after George brings this up, she then concedes that it did happen, and that she did choose to leave it out of her response, even saying that not only did they cuddle for over an hour, but they were also spooning. If you're already spooning with a girl for over an hour, and she even admits herself that she was laughing and smiling during it, yeah. You got every green light in the world to make the small advancement of what, like a tummy touch or a tummy tickle under her shirt? Or even potentially even more. <laughs> like, dude, are you kidding? Spooning. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch, in front of everyone. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. So already, her initial allegation story is crumbling entirely. She lied about being freshly 18, George wasn't this creepy older man type figure, he was 26. He didn't take advantage of her when she was drunk. They were all drunk at the same time and having fun together playing drinking games, which Katie lied about George insisting on when it was actually her friends. And lastly, she lied about George touching her out of nowhere, completely omitting the context that they were cuddling and spooning purposely to try to make him look as predatory as possible. But it makes sense, you know, it's a better headline to leave out these details when trying to ruin someone's career. This girl is the furthest thing from a victim. Actually, like, actually the exact opposite. She's making George a victim of 
complete life-ruining accusations. And we're nowhere even close to being done yet. Katie also says that she was so traumatized by George tickling and touching her tummy that she was too scared to move or even breathe. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. But in her own text that she leaked herself for some reason that I can't comprehend. It shows her texting her friend the day after saying that she was fine with it and chilling. Her friend texted her, Hey buddy, I wanted to double check with you that George didn't make you uncomfortable at all last night. I saw he was getting really touchy with you, so I just wanted to double check, smile. And she responds saying, Maybe, bro, I have no clue. Like in the moment, I was chilling. But thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit like damn. A stark difference from saying that you could barely even breathe in this moment. I remember being afraid to even breathe. <sighs> And even being the most charitable, she then says this in this text, which causes its own amount of problems, but she says, And I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment, cause I was drunk. Wait, so... Wait, wait, so do you have a foggy memory of the night now? You described every last little detail in your allegation as if it happened yesterday. Like it read off like a fucking rape fan fiction, that's how much descriptive detail you went into. But now you have a foggy memory, and you don't really remember whether or not you were chilling or not? And you know, quickly touching on the over-exaggerated language she uses throughout this, I mean, this is complete rape appropriation. I live this every night and every morning with every touch I feel. I relive that room and painted a victim of a crime that I never chose. It is a crime! I felt dirty in a way that I couldn't wash off. Sorry. A black and gray striped long sleeve, Nike shorts, Calvin Klein sports bra. That's what I was wearing. That outfit, it stained on me. I just wanted to disappear, but I didn't because I realized that this is a problem bigger than me. I have a dream. Is this a forgiving world? Because I hope it's not. I hope for every touch unasked for and every person belonging to that touch rots in this world unforgiven. It pisses me off that they can hide behind their power while victims are left helpless, no matter what scenario. It pisses me off that he thought he had the right to do what he did. That he did it even in my silence. Oh my God, anybody? Is she in there? Is that my daughter in there? I really hope this can help someone. That's all I care about. I want you guys to know it's okay to hurt. Even if you've been hurt in your past, and no matter how many times you hurt, you still find room in your heart to love. And I hope you experience love. You know how much I love you! Because you deserve You know what I fucking is, Christ! I love you, too. To any guy who dates this girl after this, you deserve everything coming towards you. This is every sign in the universe you're gonna get telling you to stay the fuck away from this woman. My story is about power and age and consent. No, your story is about you being flirty with a guy one night and regretting it later on. But unlike most normal people that this happens to where they just move on with their life, you had to masquerade and pretend to be a victim to try to destroy this guy's life and career over your regrets. After George's response video though, Katie then fired back on Twitter with the most unhinged shit yet. At first, I think her strategy was trying to go into this situation as the vulnerable, small, little, weak, crying girl to get everyone's sympathy, but that's all completely gone now. She's mad and she wants blood. I mean, this response reads like a fucking ex-wife in divorce courts. For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent, in my mind, the conversation is over. Yeah, this is what I meant. This first sentence is complete headline farming. She's completely ignoring the context that cuddling with a guy and even spooning for over an hour gives him the nonverbal green light to go and make the advancement of touching your tummy or like around your waist area under your shirt. And also that you weren't the only one drunk. Everyone was drunk at this place too. And at this point I was pretty drunk and so was basically everyone in this room. No one tried to get you drunk and vulnerable to prey on you. If anything, like your friends are more to blame because they're the ones who suggested drinking the alcohol and playing the drinking games. But this is either her purposely playing dumb as a tactic or just genuinely this brain rotted by Twitter that she thinks that every time a guy has to make an advancement on a girl that they have to explicitly ask verbal consent to touch to kiss, to do anything, to have a hug. This isn't real life, this is 
Twitter. Go to any bar this weekend, and from this girl's book, you'll see 20 rapes. I prepared proof on the idea that he wouldn't admit to it, that he would deny touching me or being there, but he admitted it, that I was drunk and he touched me in front of everyone, that I never said yes, nor did he ask, and I'm still asked for a response, proof, explanations. Frankly, I think it's fucking insane. If you still need more after hearing him admit those two simple facts, then nothing I can say is going to change your mind. <laughs> Oh man, dude, this week's episode on Black Mirror. And there's a lot of irrelevant details and sections of this response that aren't even worth going over, like the fact that if George knew whether or not she was 21, which again, who fucking cares? I don't know how this has taken up such a big space of this conversation. But there are some great highlights here, like how Katie just flat out lied about a message from one of the guys who was there in the hotel with them. She claimed they said, I'm currently watching George, 26, cuddle with Katie to make George look worse and even more creepy that his own even friend pointed it out how uncomfortable he was. But it's not even the guy she claimed it was. <laughs> this guy didn't even send this message. And she shows a text message that she says is from him from the night where this happened where he says this. So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it and it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. There is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me, um, but yeah, no, that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. And then after George confirmed it wasn't this guy, he then asked Dream if he could get into contact with Katie to ask what was going on and what happened here. Who, who was the person who sent this message or did she just completely fake it? And her explanation and response was saying that it was an accident and that she got confused. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on that. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Casey had gotten confused on who said what. How do you get confused on who said what when you can literally see the name or number on the person who texted you? You are literally the one who had to blur out the name or number. How do you, how did you get this mixed up? Who is buying this shit? Casey had gotten confused on who said what. Casey had gotten confused on who said what. She didn't get confused. She tried to pull a fast one, like she's been doing this entire time, and was hoping that people wouldn't call her out on her lies. And you want to know the most blackpilling part about this, though? It worked. <laughs> it worked. Her response got the vast majority of support and nearly 70,000 likes. It keeps going though. This whole uh, we cuddled section of her response is absolute gold. Katie goes from saying that she was so scared around George that she couldn't even move or breathe to now saying that, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I did cuddle with him, but you know, that's just me when I'm being drunk. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal was just me being drunk. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I remember being afraid to even breathe. After being caught lying, this girl has completely backtracked her entire initial allegation. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things and assumed he had the right. The gall of a man to assume, after spooning with a girl for over an hour, that he could reach in for a tummy touch. Lock him up, throw away the key. Katie then says that she actually did get up, but to get more alcohol after getting sexually assaulted. And then after getting more alcohol, sitting right back down next to George, crawling back into his arms to continue getting sexually assaulted, I guess. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink more, etc. Mentally, I believe in a room on a sofa with people on it. You just sit back where you were when you get up. <laughs> no, not, not if you're getting sexually assaulted. No, actually you don't. You don't do that. Mentally, I was also drunk, and even if I were to move, that would be an obvious hit to his ego, to him and everyone in the room. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so you chose to keep getting sexually assaulted for the sake of his ego. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Dude, you should you should have led with that. Come on, come on. Okay, now I get it. Thank you. I'm in disbelief even one person bought this story, let alone the vast majority. I didn't want to embarrass him or myself. I know it's a dumb thought process. I acknowledge it. No, it's not that it's a dumb thought process. It's that you are completely full of shit and are lying. You were clearly into him that night, which is why you were giving him signs to keep making advancements on you, because you enjoyed the night. 
You enjoyed yourself. That's why you even stayed afterwards to keep cuddling and spooning with George and having a good time after your own friends left. Your best friend left because they were throwing up. And you were so into George that you didn't go help out your best friend who's drunk and throwing up because you were so desperate to get back in George's arms. You weren't this scared girl who couldn't move or breathe. You moved very fine to get more alcohol and back into his arms while spooning with the guy. And you, you could breathe fine. You, you were able to breathe. But then the night came to a close, you woke up, you spoke to some of your friends, and then regretted it afterwards. And now we're going on this campaign to try to destroy this guy's life over just you regretting the night that you clearly were consensually and giving him signs to make advancements on you. I know this sounds forward, but that's all this is. But my absolute favorite part of both Katie's stream and written response on Twitter is her taking up the role of the Martin Luther King Jr. of sexual assault victims, giving her commentary on the current state of society that we live in. These situations always end in victim blame. If I didn't do this, she shouldn't have worn that. She shouldn't have been drinking. She was asking for it. We are embedded into a society to cover for assault. It's what we are built on. I want this situation to circle back to the original point, to make aware the reality that girls face in this community, that many people are forced into silence. I just don't want victims to feel like they have to prove themselves to people to be believed, that they are only valid if they had proof. I believe you. Katie believes you. This nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Imagine you actually got back alleyed and you have to sit here and listen to this girl act as if she went remotely through anything even comparable to what you went through. Getting all this social validation pretending to be a victim for getting tickled by a guy she was cuddling with for over an hour. There is not a bigger piss in the face to real victims than this. But then when you thought it couldn't get any better, Katie Bugs. I'm not joking, then goes on to lecture other people who make false accusations, condemning them, saying that it hurts real victims like her. I also want to note that those who make false allegations to deplatform someone or to seek attention are scum. You are the reason people choose to never come out with their stories. You are the reason there is distrust in coming forward about these situations. I hope you rot. <laughs> what can I even say? What am I- <laughs> I- I- nothing. I have nothing. And then she finishes by saying she's gonna be taking a nice week vacation off after maliciously trying to destroy someone's life over nothing. Hope you enjoy that vacation in the Bahamas. But I've been holding off on one specific post to read out for the perfect time, and I think, uh, that's probably right about now. Moving back a little in the timeline, after Katie's first allegation stream, before George even responded, he put out a tweet saying that he will be replying very soon. And Katie didn't like this. She then quote tweeted him saying, <laughs> saying this, which is so funny to go and read back on given all the context we now know. This amount of confidence should be studied in a lab. We are waiting. Pull whatever you can find. I also have screen recorded everything. I planned on using it to support my case if needed, but please share it on my behalf if you'd like, because we both know what happened. That's why I could sleep at night without scrambling for screenshots to try and twist. Yeah, I know that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. That's why you're scared, because me and every other creator knows the truth. Um, people claimed that we came to the hotel having already drank, we didn't. That's something you have to live with. Yes, I was naive, but I have room to change, to grow up. Eight years exactly. And when I'm your age, I'll be ten times the person you are. And you will always be the 27 year old still acting like a child. I'm not scared of you anymore. I've been waiting for so long to say this, but you're a fucking coward. Goodbye for now. Despite all these things though, the provable lies, the contradictions, I mean even her own friend coming out and giving a different story from what hers was, but the public response from the majority of fans was this. I don't want him to be deplatformed. I want to see footage of him being attacked. 11,000 likes. Electric chair. 8,000 likes. Abusers will lie. Men with power who target young women lie so that they can remain in power and keep wielding their power against young women. Remember that when you watch this. He is going to do everything he can to stay in power. Dude, did I click onto the Harvey Weinstein documentary? What the fuck is happening? They even added VidCon to get him kicked off on the roster this year, and it worked. But it wasn't just fans saying this. Even the people closest to him and multiple other creators in the community 
all completely threw George under the bus. What the living fuck are you thinking in that moment? Oh, what can I get away with? You gotta be out of your fucking living mind, drunk or not. They're so young. They're so young. And you're so fucking old. What are you doing? They're kids. They're teenagers. I think that if you have been caught clearly irresponsible with this position of power over teenagers, I don't think we should allow a second opportunity when we're dealing with teenagers and children. I can't. I can't, bro. That is disgusting to say. Many victims are told, you were sexually assaulted, you just changed your mind. You just regretted it. And that's not true. Just because they're 18, you think they're the same as a consenting adult who's 30, nearly 30. I literally cannot. It's just so fucking wild to me. You are never entitled to keep it forever if you are shown that you can't be responsible with it when kids are involved. Dream, who's his closest friend, for some reason did an impromptu Twitter space, completely disavowing George. I think that uh, he did something fucked up. I think that what happened was fucked up. I think that it was terrible. And I think that I feel terrible for any involvement that I had. And I feel terrible for Katie. Um, I think that Katie deserves all the support that you can give her. It is a terrible situation. It is a terrible thing. The pain that she feels. He sounds like a fucking second grader who got in trouble in class. What is this? It is a terrible thing. Pain is not good. Oh, go gold star, dude. Gold star. Fucking dream. Thank you. I care about people and I want people to talk to me if they have anything, any problem. This guy is seriously breaking down in tears, crying over this. I never want to hurt anybody. I never want to do too bad. I never want to do evil. I never want to contribute to anyone's life in a negative way and i'm sorry i'm sorry katie i really am this shit was a complete joke either he wholeheartedly means all this and is just that pathetic to throw his best friend under the bus for a tummy tickle after spooning with a girl or <laughs> this is all just another tactic for sympathy baits uh to try to get out of the situation the best way as possible but not only dream george's second best friend sapnap put out a tweet saying this first things first i want to say that i support katie and i think it's incredibly brave to come out and share your story in front of everyone and i hope you're taking care of yourself and are doing well <laughs> incredibly brave this girl's trying to destroy your best friend's life over nothing and this is what you say because of this i waited before commenting to organize my thoughts and after seeing all of the facts it is very clear that katie is a victim and everyone should support her and stand by her a hundred percent what? What facts have you seen exactly? And how in your investigation did you not notice that George proved this girl to be a complete liar? These have got to be the worst two friends in the fucking world. I don't know. I think I, I, I always thought that I thought that our friendships, our friendship is just like really genuine. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think that's one of the biggest things that we have like a bunch of genuine friendships and we're actually just we, we are just genuinely having fun with each other and i think that's what people like so his two best friends fucked him over completely he's lost hundreds of thousands of followers on all platforms mr beast took him out of his ad campaign and numerous other creators have come out in support of katie dogpiling him destroying his reputation all over the phantom tummy tickle <laughs> this has got to be the greatest cancellation story of all time and i would for example, tickle her. But the two main notable creators who I think had the best coverage on this are Max GGs with just about 100k followers and Amesy with over a million. Starting with my British cousin. My friend! He puts out a tweet saying, Rotten hell, you fucking piece of shit. I saw how you ruined my friend's life. Nobody should feel sympathy in whatever lies you're going to spout with your stupid PR team backing you, you buffoon. I wish you and your little freak friends who are complacent in abuse the worst lives ever. You are all fucking horrible and your content sucks dick. Rotten hell for assaulting my friend, George. And plus, I make better Minecraft videos than you. This one, this this one's probably my personal favorite. A little candy cane for us to share. share. Yes. There's actually only this much. That works. Max, you 
your fucking gag. But thank God he gave us the live stream version of this, making for the best thing to come out of this entire situation. Uh, this is this is a this is a fact. What I'm about to tell you is a fact, not not something that you can create an argument out of. I was there, and she cried in my fucking arms. This 19-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl, she cried in my fucking arms because of what you did, George Not Found. And to try, to try and use me, my friends, or anybody else as a scapegoat for your fucking sexual abuse is disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. My friend cried in my fucking arms about this, and you're on stream denying it all, denying the fucking hurt that you caused to her. You and all of your abuse sympathizer friends, you are all fucking horrible. You are a 26 year old man, 27 now, trying to fucking put the blame on 18 year olds that you don't fucking know. What the fuck is wrong with you? You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't serious criminal. And a girl cried in my arms because of what you did. Weeks later, weeks. Show loads of love to Katie. Go and watch her vlogs. They're so fucking good. They're so good. These are timeless videos. Timeless. These are the only videos I feel like I could show my children. These are so fucking incredible. Fully, she is an incredible storyteller, incredible filmmaker, incredible person. Like, what's the point of life? I was disassociating. These are timeless videos. Timeless. These are the only videos I feel like I could show my children. These are so fucking incredible. I understand that many people are angry at my friend group. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't give a fuck. I have never given a fuck about any hate that I receive. That video of you crying is hilarious. Thank you. I think it's so funny that my friend was sexually assaulted. And I stood up for her. And you think that's funny. Fucking, you are a sick in the head. Go fuck yourself. Uh, anyways. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's that's all I wanted to show for him. <laughs> but now, AMZ, with her huge following, made this tweet before George even released his first response, saying, Silence is not consent. It will never be consent. I hope you understand whatever bullshit response you and your PR team magically come up with, it will never take back the hurt you've caused on someone who was young and should have been safe in your space as a 26 year old man. Literally saying that there's nothing you can do. You are instantly deemed guilty and there's nothing you could do to stop it. You guys thought Nick is not green was bad for his super mega coverage? Welcome to the fucking Minecraft community. This is not some petty drama. This is not some Twitter thing. I'm not putting my voice into drama that is just a stupid little thing that's gonna blow over tomorrow. This is abuse. There are victims involved in this and you guys are treating it like it's Twitter drama. It's not. This is a serious thing. It is a crime. It is a bad thing. I swear to God, there's some people online that could watch someone literally murder someone and they'd be like, oh, wow. Now he's getting canceled. You can only pray and hope that these people end up getting accused one day as well and have to deal with the same standards they pushed onto other people. You know, guilty until proven innocent, it's gonna be a real bitch to deal with when it comes around to you. In a world of cruelty, you can be kind. Look after yourselves. Good guy, Amesy. CRIME! And these are supposed to be the good guys in this situation too. Destroying this guy's career and life for literally nothing and they won. Like George now for forever will have these accusations following him for the rest of his life. Anytime you search his name, he's always gonna have sexual assault allegations for the rest of his li online life, career, anytime he wants to interact with a girl in the future, she's gonna be able to Google his name and find out that he's been accused of sexual assault before. It's exactly what happened with Dream, if not worse. It's the same situation, just a few months apart. But you know, it's hard to show that much sympathy to Dream or really anyone else, everyone in this whole Minecraft community because of the way they go about handling these situations. All of this lately has completely brought to light that this whole Minecraft scene is full of complete rats and snakes that will throw even their closest friends under the bus if it means that it helps restore their public reputation socially. All of them are in desperate hope to not get eaten by their audience and they'll do anything to make sure that doesn't happen. And this is why you can make the argument that a certain amount of this is deserved because they all take part in feeding this monster of an audience and then act surprised when it comes around to them when it's their time to pay the tax. Perpetually enabling this behavior to keep it going, forever calling out other people for the smallest, most insignificant 
things, trying to destroy their career over nothing at all. And you know, this is gonna happen until it eats everyone. Even George, I didn't harp on it too much, but this guy was pretty pathetic throughout this whole entire situation. I, I mean, he would bend the knee multiple times and apologize way too much to a girl who wants to end you and end your life. Like, what the fuck was this tweet, man? This is the problem, and honestly, the reason why a person like Katie even made her allegation in the first place is because you guys promote this culture, enabling this behavior, allowing a person like Katie to come to the surface and accuse you later down the line. So until any of you guys figure out how to grow a backbone and spine and defend yourself from clear bullshit accusations, this will continue forever and will never stop. So, the choice is yours. And that's where the story ended, but out of complete left field, weeks after her first initial allegation stream, Katie then went live to make yet another response where she changes her story again, claiming that George now groped and fondled her tits. The one biggest thing that I want to clear up, it is fucking sexual assault, okay? I'm not gonna apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching? that he is admitting, has admitted to many times. He felt up my tits. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up, fondled, whatever you want to say. He felt up my tits. Mind you, up until this point, it's been understood that the main allegation is that he touched and tickled her stomach slash waist area, but at worst was inching towards places that she didn't want. But yeah, for some reason, we find out the most important detail in her third shot at this weeks later. I'm upset because I was on a couch, 18 years old, drunk, on a couch with other people in the room, and he sticks up his hand and starts feeling my tits. That was my fucking story. That wasn't your story. This is the first time you've ever brought this up. It's really weird. Throughout this whole hour-long stream, she acts as if she's been saying this the entire time. No, I'm not upset that he tickled me. I'm not saying that he assaulted me because he tickled me or because he was close to me, no. I mean, that's literally what you said, though. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? That was my fucking story. How are you gonna be mad at people for your inability to communicate your own story correctly? Mentioning where the guy touched you when you're accusing someone of sexual assault is literally step one. Aside from this, though, even if this did happen, who cares? Like, let me remind you that you were cuddling and even spooning with this guy, laughing and smiling, got up to drink more, went back into his arms, and now suddenly it's sexual assault when he touches your tits a little after you were spooning with the guy for over an hour? Come on. Maybe if you started smacking them or groping them aggressively, then, then yeah, I'm with you. But no, everything we know about this guy is that he was taking small, like, little slow advancements towards you to see how you reciprocate and then seeing after you would positively respond, then you'd keep going. Even with this new detail, this isn't even close to sexual assault. He felt up my tits. Also, it's crazy that this is the same person. What, what happened in your vacation that now you can come back and shout about how George was groping your tits and not a tear gets shed, but in your first allegation stream, you could barely go a sentence without turning on the waterworks. cry me a river. In this hour-long stream though, Katie responds to a lot of the critiques that people have been levying at her and apparently is taking accountability for lying. First addressing the text that she said was from George's friend. The screenshot, I will acknowledge, that was a complete miscommunication. There's a screenshot I said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault. It's a real screenshot. What I got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from. It was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault, it was from the girl. Yeah, she's doubling down on the fact that it was it was just a miscommunication on her end, which is the real reason why she got it wrong, despite her being the one who literally had to censor out the name or number of the person who sent the text. But get this, Katie then continues to say that the girl who's the real one who sent the text actually messaged her when she posted it and told Katie that it was her, not the guy who she was claiming it was. But for some reason, Katie never corrected the record and continued to let that lie float around despite her knowing that it was wrong. I got a message from the girl that actually sent the text and was like, 
it was a while after I already posted my response and was like, you kind of mixed up who the text was from, but I'm sure it won't be a big deal because it was only one of the minor things you said, which obviously we've seen uh, that was not the case. But I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I completely was wrong about that. No, you're not owning up to this. You're taking the only option you have left after being proven to be a liar. Apologizing after being called out isn't a genuine display of taking accountability. It's damage control and a tactic at that point. You had every opportunity to just make a little reply under your response to clarify that you got this wrong, but you didn't, probably because you knew it would make you look worse. But ironically, that actually would have helped you because you allowed George to be the one to point out this inconsistency, making it actually worse for you and hurting your credibility more. The amount of miscommunication, misinformation that is spreading is one of the biggest reasons. I feel like I just don't even really have anything to say anymore. You are the misinformation. Misinformation that is spreading. But Katie then addresses people pointing out that she wasn't freshly 18 and says that it was actually a typo in her script that was supposed to say freshly out of high school. Also the fact that I said I was freshly 18 which is something a lot of people are mad about when in reality I was 18 and five months old. My bad. Uh, what I meant to say in that original stream where I said I was freshly 18. I said I was freshly 18 and just out of high school. What I meant to say was I was 18 and freshly out of high school. I just put it in front of the wrong thing. This excuse would work if this was the only time you referred to yourself as freshly 18 in your allegation. Because in the script, it's at least plausible that she could have misplaced freshly before 18 instead of before graduated, making the sentence flow as I was 18 and I just freshly graduated high school instead. It's a flimsy excuse, but it would have at least worked here. But you can't use that reason for the second time you said it. They knew that I was freshly 18, and they also knew I was very drunk. There's no mention of high school at all in that sentence. You just flat out say that you're freshly 18. I think when crafting this lie for her response, Katie only thought she said freshly 18 at the beginning, but just forgot completely that she said it twice in the stream. <laughs> Dude, this girl can't even come up with a good lie. I'm sorry, I do get frustrated with that because people are mad at me saying that I'm a liar because of these things instead of acknowledging the fact that he fucking admitted to doing what he did to me. And we're worried about the fact that I was- I said I was freshly 18 when I meant to say I was freshly out of high school. They knew that I was freshly 18 and they also knew I was very drunk when I meant to say I was freshly out of high school. Freshly 18. Freshly out of high school. Just completely shameless with it. First, she tried to pull a fast one in her allegation that she was freshly 18, got called out for this not being true, and then made up a second lie as an excuse to cover up her first. I'm not a liar. And this is where Katie really starts to scramble to defend herself. Despite her being the one who admitted that they were cuddling and spooning for over an hour, she now claims that it was simply just friendly cuddling. We were on a couch, sitting, sitting up sitting up. We were all on a couch. Everything and anything you could consider cuddling, I saw that as a friendly, like, drunk what you do with your friends. I was doing it with my best friend that was right next to me as well, you know? She wasn't giving him signs at all. It was just friendly cuddling, you know? Two people of the opposite gender who have only known each other for, what, like two nights? They, they friendly cuddle all the time, and not only friendly cuddle, but have spooning sessions too. Friendly spooning sessions. Um, and again, I believed we any you, touches Katie. were more initiated by him, but again, that's just hearsay. Look at how nuanced Katie is becoming. She's learning. Yes, it's hearsay who initiated the touch, true. But uh, I guess my question is, is that why has your hearsay changed on three separate occasions now every time you reply? First, you made no mention that you and George were cuddling at all and that he touched you out of nowhere. Then you said you did cuddle, even spooned, and that a lot of the touch was initiated by him, which means, yeah, the majority was George, but that's still admission that some of it was initiated by you. And now it's that any and all touches were initiated by him and him only? Any touches were more initiated by him, but again, that's just hearsay. Katie threw a Hail Mary with this next one though, where she says that she's actually asexual, so therefore it's impossible for her to ever even enjoy being touched in the first place. Um, and for everyone saying, well, you could have gave nonverbal consent, I will tell you right now, if I was given the opportunity to give even nonverbal consent, my answer would have always been no. I'm asexual. I don't like sexual stuff. Um, I'm on the spectrum of asexual. My bad, Katie. I didn't know you were on the spectrum of asexuality. You know, this changes everything now. My support is with you for being on the spectrum. 
in more ways than one. I'm on the spectrum of people saying, why did you come publicly about this? Why didn't you keep it private? Because I saw what Shelby did. I saw the effect Shelby had on me. Realizing that someone I looked up to went through the same thing as me, you don't understand what that does. I wanted to be that for other people. And you know, for someone who's claiming that the only reason she did this is to inspire other girls to come forward with their stories, she gives the worst advice possible. Saying that if you're a victim, you shouldn't go to the police to tell the story. No. Instead, broadcast it live on Twitch like me. For people saying take legal action, do you know the odds of winning an assault case? The system you would like to believe that it's always for you? The amount of fucking injustice that happens with our system is insane. And you sit here and see someone come out about their story and your immediate thing is, well, take it up with the law? Like, that will serve any justice. So, fuck you. True, getting people prosecuted through actual legal means, not Katie style, but getting Twitter likes and Twitch subs while doing it, that'll surely help with your rage. No matter what I say, no matter what proof I come out about, people that don't want to believe will never believe. They will never believe, no matter what comes out. It's because they don't want to they will continue to find excuses to not face reality. I don't know why, but this last response actually really surprised me. Like, I already knew this girl was a combination of stupidity and malice, but just to shamelessly get on camera and to lie to cover up your last lie about the freshly 18 thing and to say that it was a typo when she just knew that she was just full of shit from the jump, I mean, like, Damn, like, damn, dude. That, that's some Walter White shit. Kitty Bugs is a wolf hiding in sheep's clothing, masquerading as a victim to lie and falsely accuse George, ironically, victimizing him now. George Not Found is the real victim. I've been belittled, blamed, invalidated, been called a liar, been called Amber Heard, been called any name, even though he sat there and admitted to it. Again, it's not false allegations. Uh, it isn't. Fake allegations. It's not fake allegations. I'm not a liar. The way I've been treated is fucking insane. And I'm not afraid to say it's fucking insane. The hypocrisy that has surrounded this situation is fucking insane. I'll get into just the blaming of me uh, that is insane. Uh, my goal when I came out about this was for it not to be about drama for it not to be about canceling. It was about my journey as a victim. Um, and again, I'm asexual. I would have never liked it and then regretted it. I would have never liked it to begin with. I don't understand believing the one point of view over the other. Even the fact of fucking reporters messaging me asking for my fucking take on it all or my comment on it. I actually fucking choke. Are you joking? It's, it's, it's insane. Watching thousands of people comment on your sexual assault story. People use it as a talking point on a YouTube video or a podcast. You know, it being made into clickbait. It's, it's insane. Um, 